So the advent of immunotherapy that's available for all in the community leads to the question of how do you assess response in these patients? When do you stop if you've seen growth? When do you continue? And how do you push forward? Dr. Pavlik. Well, uh, again, that, that always leaves a lot of angst when you have to decide is someone having true progression or is someone having what we know as pseudoprogression, which is essentially an inflammatory response, an immunologic response to the therapy around the tumors where things actually look worse, but the, t the patient's actually responding. Um, and so I think it's very important that patients know that if your scans obviously look good and the patient looks good, well, then I think it's a no-brainer. We know what's happening. If the scan looks bad and the patient's deteriorating, well, I think that's also a no-brainer. But what happens when the patient is the same or better and your scan looks worse? Mm -hmm. And I think, at least in my practice, what we do is we usually sit and watch, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily for another three to six months, but give patients somewhere between six and eight weeks to declare themselves as to whether they're responding or whether they're not responding. Is that yeah. how you go Yeah, forward? I mean, when I talk to patients about at the time that we're assessing response, I, I break it down. They say, well, how are you going to make this decision? I say, well, it's easy. I have a 100-point scale, and, you know, and there's three variables. And, and, and the, the biggest variable is how you're doing. You know, how is the patient doing? Are they doing great? And that's probably 60, 70 of the points right there. The scans are probably in another 20 or 30. And then the labs with the LDH can help me break a tie one way or the other. Um, so, but what I feel is most important is, is how the patient's doing. Usually they all three go together, scan, patients doing scans and labs. But if they're, if they're not, I'll err on the side of how the patient's doing rather than the scans or the labs. And then you'll come back and image when? Well, it depends. I mean, if we're talking about on, on a PD-1 drug where we're going to continue maintenance, I would continue that and do another image in probably 12 weeks unless something clinically deteriorates. Um, if we're talking about um, ipilimumab where we just finished the four cycles, and um, I, might, I might want to do that in a sooner time frame. Do you agree with that, Dr. Ampaka? Uh, I, d I do agree with that. I think that also with uh, many of the new therapies, including the oncolytic immunotherapies, it is not uncommon for patients to have new lesions developing and other lesions getting larger before the patient then responds. We also know that it can take time to respond. For instance, in the uh, OPTIM study, which is the phase three randomized clinical trial looking at TVEC, we know that in the patients that ultimately developed a durable response, meaning a response that lasted six months or longer, ha almost half of those patients had new lesions that developed or had growth of the lesions that they had initially before they then developed a response, a durable response. And we know that in patients that have this growth or new lesions developing, it seemed to take longer for them to develop that durable response, but it's not necessarily preclusive of them developing the response. I think that's important to recognize also with ipilimumab and many of these other agents that you can have late responders. So I think, again, I agree with really, ultimately the patient comes first. We treat the patient, not the scans, not the labs. If the patient feels great and they're doing well, I think that we continue with the other treatment. Dr. Kaufman, for how long? I, you know, I think it depends. Um, you know, if you have a patient who has low volume disease and looks pretty good, I think you can stretch it out a little longer. If you, you know, have a patient who's got significant disease and you're not really quite sure, uh, you know, on their performance status, then I think you might have to, you know, re-image a little bit earlier. So I, I think, um, and it depends on which drug. So certainly if you limimab, I think we sometimes see these very delayed uh, responses or pseudoprogression before response, I think we don't see it quite as often with, with PD-1 or, or IL-2. So, um, you know, I don't think you have to wait as long as you do with the bilimumab. Good points. Now let's go to a positive scenario instead, where you have a patient who's responding but has everything go away or the majority go away and then has persistent lesions. What do you do? What are your thoughts there? So, so you know, this is a situation where we often will turn to PET scan, and um, you know the 
typically we'll see um, PET scan turn negative fairly early with some of these immunotherapies, and it can be a good way to distinguish a truly active uh, persistent tumor lesion uh, from one that isn't. And at least at our center, you know, if we see an isolated or potentially resectable group of lesions, we'll often go after them surgically. And if the PET is negative, then I think that gives us a little bit of reassurance that the patient might be responding and we feel better about watching them and maybe extending out the imaging. What about the patient who is stable, who doesn't have significant shrinkage, the patient who doesn't have significant growth, is just remaining about the same of where they showed up, the amount of tumor mass. What do you do there, Dr. Pavlik? Well, I, I think to echo Howard's response, I think a PET scan can be very helpful um, because you can certainly have a number of tumors that can become inactive. Um, the question then becomes, do you still continue treatment? Do you not continue treatment? Depending on which agent you're using is also going to color how you make that decision. Um, but I think a PET scan is really a good way to help make that therapeutic decision to continue with therapy, to change therapy, or to just sit tight. But for me, if I see a patient who remains stable on immunotherapy and is doing well, I would just continue. Because we've seen these patients uh, that they have almost the same survival benefits, they, the same long-term durabilities mm -hmm. as patients who have what we call a classical response. Right. I think that's a good point. I mean, you know, with IL-2, it was clear that complete remissions did better than partial remissions. Mm -hmm. But it's, I don't think that's necessarily true with PD-1, or at least we don't know that at, at this point. So, you well, know. Well, we know it's not true with ipilimumab. Right, right, right. So, I mean, a complete remission is not necessarily what we all need. And, and, that, and that is, it, provide, it, it provides a, a lot of anxiety in the clinic, actually, when a patient is doing awesome, but they're not at 100%. Right, they want everything to They go want everything away. to be gone. And, and I'm with them. I, I mean, I think that I, I, I want it to, everything to be gone, too. But I think I'll echo, you know, um, Dr. Kopp and Pavlik, you know, I, I, before these effective agents, I was... I, PET scans were fairly useless to me, but now I think they might be coming back in terms of trying to figure out, you know, patients having maybe a 70% response, but then, you know, there might be a couple lesions that are lighting up, and then, hey, maybe we should be trying some targeted things like radiation or surgery in some of the lesions that are still metabolically active. So just to address your, your question about stable disease, we've recently published our IL-2 data, and we looked at our patients who, whose initial response was recorded as stable, and we did find that they had a significant improvement in overall survival when compared to patients who really show true progression. So I think stable disease right. is probably quite meaningful, especially with immunotherapy, and I would certainly continue those patients on treatment. Absolutely, and I think that this is where melanoma sort of leads, but the broader picture is that this message needs to be gotten out to almost every other oncologist seeing solid tumor is as these therapies permeate into the more frequent tumors like lung cancer, uh, other tumors, that we have to be able to get this message across. That just because you're not getting the gold star for complete regression of all disease does not mean that you're not benefiting superbly. I think also one thing that we are seeing, at least at our center, more and more is uh, patient fatigue. Uh, from the perspective, if they, you still have some lesions left and they are stable and you're on the treatment, coming in every two weeks, every three weeks for those treatments can be quite onerous for the patients. And I think after a period of time, you have patients who absolutely want to continue treatment. You have others who say, no, I'm, I'm done with treatment. And I think that that also gives us an opportunity then to really try to understand this, that having that stable disease, if we then discontinue treatment, what happens in the natural history of and this? How would you follow that patient? So those patients that discontinue, we would usually follow them, them with scans. Uh, we would do either a PET scan or a regular CT scans uh, every, every three months. Uh, then the challenge becomes if we are now 12 months later and things are still stable and they still you know, have not been on any treatment, then we usually start stretching these scans.
I think it's also as a surgeon, I often then, especially with solitary disease, we go back and operate on it. And it's not uncommon for us to do an operation and found that there's merely fibrosis there and there's no active tumor. And I think for that perspective, treating these patients in a truly multidisciplinary setting, when you consider each of these options, including medical therapy, systemic therapies, uh, radiation, and surgery, and really try to figure out what is the best thing for the patient to try to render them uh, free of disease. It's extremely important. I think that you're bringing up a really good point.